Greetings and salutations my friends, welcome to another Total War Warhammer Guide. Today we are looking at the Skink Chief and the Saurus Scar Veteran. Now they are the sort of heroes of the Lizardmen army. Obviously you've got the Skink who's a bit of a skittish, scaredy cat, not the best at fighting. And you've got the Saurus who are bred for killing shit. Right, we're going to talk about which we prefer, which uh, the various different abilities, we're going to compare them stat-wise, just to sort of get a better idea of these guys, um, and also talk about what mounts they can use in the game, and, and whether, you know, any of them are overpowered, or we think, you know, they could be better. So, let's start off with the little fella, bless him, amazing models, sports, in, uh, sports interactive, I almost called you, creative assembly, um, Absolutely stunning models. I'm always pleasantly surprised whenever I zoom into a um, unit in Total War Warhammer. They've outdone themselves. They look very, very good. So, here is the little skinky chief. He is a little dude with blowpipe. Um, he can... One of the biggest differences, I'll talk about that after we've gone through the stats, we'll talk about mounts, because that is where one of the biggest differences lies for me. So, little dude Skink Chief, he's got poison attacks, which is always nice, debuffs the enemy. Um, he's aquatic, so he can move through shallow water and fight in shallow water without any pen penalties. And he can also fire whilst moving, which is always nice, lovely skill to have that. He's got 3,500 hit points, very low armour, his leadership's not great. Speed is very good. Melee attack and defense is alright for a skink. <laughs> Doesn't say much. Um, weapon strength is 320 with armor piercing of 80. That's quite nice. Um, not very much of a charge bonus. He's got more ammunition than you can ever... You can shake a stick out. That doesn't even make sense as a thing. He's got more ammunition than he will ever need in 100 shots. He's got a higher range than the skink skirmishers and the chameleons with 100. But missile damage of 444. As you can see here, it's broken down. Very, very nice. Obviously, poison attacks as well. Um, he can has missile resistance of 15%, um, which is which is nice. 15% is not great. It's kind of like, because the chameleons get minus 40%, uh, I think it is. But it'll do. Um, he has the uh, encourage ability. This unit provides a leadership bonus to nearby allies because obviously he's a hero. He can hide in the forest because he's little. He can fire whilst he's moving. He has the cold-blooded character ability, which um, is cast on himself. So it's a regeneration spell. Sorry, he, he can cast it on himself or an ally within 200 meters. So nice range. It lasts for 23 seconds, which is lovely, um, and it replenishes hit points. So it's basically a big fat heal, right? Or regeneration, as the cold-blooded ones like to call it. Um, but it does um, reduce, it does have a, a debuff on it as well. So it's better out of combat once a, a unit has won a fight. Stick a, stick a regeneration on it and it'll be lovely. And then it's Slippery, <laughs> which is a augment that lasts 27 seconds. You can only cast it on himself and it gives him lots more defense and lots more speed. So that's kind of the get out of jail quick card. It's like if you get stuck in combat, you don't want to be there. You're getting your ass handed to you because he's not a fighty character. You can use that ability. Um, so we've got a 60 second cooldown and a 30 second cooldown. Um, that is not too bad at all. So overall... I like the damage. Obviously, he's a skink, so he's not very durable. We'll, like I said, we'll talk about mounts in a minute. And then we've got his big fat brother. I'm not even going to compare them because it would just be unfair. Um, he's got 4,168 hit points, so another 500. We will compare, actually. We'll, let's compare. Um, he's got 55 more armor, and he's shielded, so he protects him against the range fire. He's got 15 more leadership. He's not as quick. He does a, uh, melee attack and is a bit better. Defense is quite a bit better. Weapon strength is a lot better. 90 more weapon strength. And it gets a charge bonus of 32, which is not bad for a Saurus. Um, he has these special abilities that he has the same missile resistance, that 15% that heroes get. Um, he has a charge defense versus big targets because he's obviously armed with a spear, which is nice. Um, he has the encourage ability we talked about before. He can hide in a forest. Um, he's got the same cold-blooded thing. He's got the... Um, Foe Seeker, which instead of the running away because I'm a skink, he's got I'm going to punch your face in because I'm a Saurus. And which gives him a speed bonus and a vigor bonus, which is very nice. And he also has the Deadly Onslaught, which is cast, they both these, I think both these abilities are on himself. 
Gives him a charge, big charge bonus, an armor piercing damage, and weapon. The charge bonus isn't great. 36% looks nice, but his charge isn't amazing. It's decent. So bear that in mind. But it gives him the armor piercing damage, which is nice. He has some armor piercing um, already. How much was his armor piercing? 120 armor piercing. So very nice. And the bonus bonus is larger, 35. So, and he, of course, he has the predatory sense, means he can spot hiding units nearby he doesn't have the other one that i've totally forgotten the name of um no it's not coming to me because i'm old and forget shit um so he doesn't lose control and start rampaging all over the show he can keep control because he should be he's a boss so obviously very different characters we've got a ranged unit and we've got a get in your face and kill stuff unit the biggest difference for me is what you can mount these guys on so take the saurus for example he can go on a <clears throat> cold one and a carnosaur. A cold one is basically a lizard horse. Um, and a carnosaur is basically a T-Rex. Badass T-Rex. Basically both units, especially the carnosaur, just providing him a lot more fightiness so he can get into the thicker things. Now the, the, the um, skink... Chief is a lot different. He gets to go ride on the pterodon, which is a big pterodactyl flying dinosaur lizardy thing. Um, it's not big; it's quite small. It's more of a mode of transport. It doesn't provide a massive amount of durability. It provides some, but it provides him that speed, especially with a ranged character. But you can also, if you don't fancy flying about on a little thing, you can sit him on a massive fat thing. You can hand him on an, uh, a stegodon or an ancient stegodon. So basically giving him a massive amount of protection so he can sit up top and shoot people and whilst basically sitting on a tank. So very, very different options. Um, the, the, the Saurus gets to become more fighty with the Carnosaur. For me personally, I quite like the idea of the Stegodon, but I, I really do like the idea of the Pterodon. That... Because you don't want to really be getting him stuck into fights. So having him coming around on a pterodon, being able to just move about quickly, fly over the battlefield, pick off targets with his good damage and his poison attacks to debuff targets, you know, that last 10 seconds. So you can shoot it at one unit and then shoot it at another unit, keep them debuffed. Um, and use it to es use the pterodon to escape if he gets does get in trouble. I think that just suits him better. Um, but the stegodon's a lot of fun as well. So there we go, guys. Let me know what you you think I'm going to use. I <clears throat> I think I'm not one for building armies that are just like perfectly optimal, the perfect balance for the points and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think they're both valuable units. I just love skinks. So I'm more than likely probably going to use a skink um, as one of my favourites. You know, I played an Orcs and Goblins army where I just played goblins before that was even a thing. Um, so I, I'm used to having these little wimpy guys and stuff. Obviously, you've got to very much watch out for his leaderships. And if you're fighting high elves and you're stuck on a pterodon, you might just get shot to pieces. So bear that in mind. But keeping him around the back, flying him around, shooting stuff, using his debuff with his poison, using his boosts and his regeneration skills. Um, the Yeah, it was called regeneration. I got, oh, it's called cold-blooded. Sorry, cold-blooded skill. Um, it's going to be really useful. And then obviously the Saurus is if you need more frontline punching power, basically. But if you stick him on a Carnosaur, he is going to rip people to shreds. There we go, guys. Let me know what you think of these two characters in the comments below. Which is your personal favourite? Or give me, like, you can give me two versions. What's, what do you, like, think is best for the game as a whole? And what do you actually, do you know, just like? Just vote for the Stink. You, I called him a Stink. Just vote for the Skink. You know you love a bit of Skink action. Go on. There you go. Please check out all my other unit guides. I've done them for all for Total War, Warhammer 2 and the original games. So they're all there in the library and they're in the playlists. So go check them out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.